Welcome everyone. These talks are an introduction to coronary angiographic projections. Here is a typical cath lab setup. The patient is supine, the operator on the right. Radiation is emitted from below and passes up through the patient, collected by the collecting tube above. It is as if your face is the collecting tube. That is your vantage point as images are obtained. The C-arm can be moved into various projections to obtain different views. Now it must be made clear that when you move cranially, it is the collecting tube that moves cranially. By extension, it is your face that is moving cranially. If the C-arm moves caudal, left or right, your face or collecting tube is moving in those directions. If the C-arm rotates to the head by convention, we call that cranial. Alternatively, it can be caudal. If the collecting tube moves towards the patient's left arm, we call that left antero-oblique or LAO or conversely RAO. At the Yale cath lab, we follow this convention. We engage the left coronary system first, engaging the left main in a flat projection. We then follow this order, caudal, cranial, RAO cranial, RAO caudal, and LAO caudal. Sometimes we also obtain an LAO cranial view, depending on the situation. The right coronary artery is engaged in a left anterior oblique projection. Then an image is obtained in the same LAO projection and subsequently a cranial view is obtained. Sometimes an RAO view is obtained as well. So here are a few tips. In this image you can see how the collecting tube or your face has moved towards the patient's head. This will provide you with a cranial view. The image that is projected onto here will be that obtained between the two dotted arrows. And you can see how the diaphragm, which abuts the heart, is going to be prominent in this image. So a clue to a cranial projection is the prominence of the diaphragm in the image. As the collecting tube moves caudal, your vantage point will of course change. You can now see that the diaphragm no longer is a prominent portion of the image that is formed. And here's another tip. As you obtain an LAO projection, the spinal column will form an image towards the right side of what you see. So a good clue to LAO projection is the spinal area will be towards the right. Now the opposite will occur if we swing to the RAO projection. You can see that the vertebral body, which is a posterior structure will now cast an image that will form on the left side. Bear in mind that the collecting tube is your face, it is your vantage point. The third and very important tip to note is that the apical region lays very anteriorly compared to the rest of the heart. It is right adjacent to the sternum. Here is another demonstration of the same point. By the arrow you can see the apical region and see how it is anterior and it is laying close to the sternum. All right, let's get right to it and look at the left system. Here we are in the neutral position and remember that we had said that the apical area is a very anterior structure. As we move caudally, this starts to happen. 
the LED actually moves above the circumflex in the image. Here's the circumflex, the OM branches will emerge this way, and here's the LED coming out of the screen at you with the diagonal branches, if they were there, coming off to the right. Now, as a rule, the caudal views are best for visualizing the circumflex and the cranial views best for the LAD. So here we are in the neutral position and we're going to go cranial. And as we do so, you can see how the LAD spreads better and is better seen along much of its length, whereas the circumflex is in the back less prominent with a lot of overlap. We are now in the cranial projection and we're going to add some RAO to it. We're going to go into RAO cranial. So here we go. Notice that as we do so, the LAD particularly proximate really spreads out. You can see lengthwise beautifully and the circumflex ends up below. We will move from RIO cranial here to RIO caudal. So we're going to swing caudal and watch what happens as we do so. You'll notice that the LAD becomes a little foreshortened, but the bifurcation opens up even better. So from RIO cranial to RIO caudal. Next, I'll show you the LAO caudal or spider view. If we start from the neutral position and go caudal, as you have seen before, the following will happen. The LAD will come anterior compared to the circumflex and it will be coming out of the screen towards you. Now to add some LAO to this, of course, we're gonna go like that. So we're gonna go from here a straight caudal here to the LAO caudal view, and you can still see the LAD coming at the screen at you, but it typically moves over because we've gone LAO, and you can now see the bifurcation much more clearly. This is one of the benefits of the spider view, the left main bifurcation. What I've done here is to add a couple of diagonal branches to the LAD that we already had. And the reason I did this is to show you how to view the diagonal branches. Here is a neutral position. As we said before, the cranial views are very useful for visualizing the LAD. So we're gonna go cranial. But to be able to see the diagonal LAD bifurcations better, it is actually better to add LAO to this view, LAO cranial, which is like that. And you can now see how much better the diagonal LAD bifurcations are. So straight cranial, RAO cranial, but if you come LAO cranial, wonderful views of the diagonal LAD bifurcations. Now the RCA tracks posteriorly and leads to the PDA branch in the intraventricular groove and the PL branch can emerge, but there are variations possible. So that said, we will move to the RCA and look at that. As you know, the RCA is engaged in the LAO projection. So we're gonna go LAO and you will typically see something like this with the PDA and the PL branches showing like that. Most RCA interventions are performed in this view. Now, one downside of the LAO projection is that it does not show the bifurcation quite as well. So we can go cranial. And as we do so, so from neutral position to cranial, the bifurcation is seen much better, although the proximal vessel is now relatively foreshortened. 
Finally, there may be times when we want to see the mid RCA better, and to do so, we can go to the RAO view. So we're going to go to the patient's right, and as we do so, watch what happens to the main body of the RCA. It flattens out and becomes quite easy to see. However, the branches are now much more difficult to see. Looking at live moving angiographic projections can be quite intimidating for the viewer. Over time, you will develop pattern recognition and experience, but even at the beginning, there's plenty you can do to help understand what's going on. In this case, you can see that at the beginning of the picture, the vertebral columns are seen roughly behind the catheter. This would suggest to you that this image was obtained in a flat projection. In other words, there's not too much LAO or RAO. The other thing you will see here is that the diaphragm is very prominent. This raises the possibility that this is a cranial projection. In fact, this is an AP cranial view of the left system and the main vessel that tracks down near the bottom of the image is, of course, the LAD, because as you know, the cranial views are typically best for the LAD. Now in this view, you really do not see the diaphragm that much, if at all. Also, if you compare the position of the catheter and the vertebral bodies behind them, they are really centered. So this is a PA projection. This is flat. But in this case, this is a caudal view. The vessel running beneath is the circumflex and its OM branches. And the vessel that runs above it and is somewhat foreshortened is the LAD. Remember again, as we said before, that the periapical area is very anterior. So as you go caudal, the LAD moves above or more anterior to the circumflex. So in caudal views, the LAD is above, the circumflex is below. And you can also again appreciate how the caudal views are better for visualizing the circumflex artery. You can actually see some disease in the branches down there. But looking at the LAD in this view, as you can see above, is not very helpful. In the cath lab, you will be exposed to both transfemoral and transradial catheterization, although the latter is our favorite. With transfemoral, you can have a relatively easy time engaging the vessel. The catheter seems to follow the path of the aortic arch quite easily. With radial catheterization, it may not be quite so straightforward. The catheter may have to effectively bounce off walls of the aorta and have to negotiate tortuosities. But you should persevere because this is truly the better way to do these procedures. Visualizing bypass grafts will be part of your learning experience. In general, grafts are engaged in the LAO projection. As a general rule, the location of the grafts can depend on the vessel that they are supplying. Here is one tool to help you to remember the order in which grafts are implanted. You will notice that the third is the LAD. A graft to the LAD from the aorta is of course unusual. It is typically a lima directly from the subclavian artery. There are a wide variety of catheters available to you to use in the cath lab. Typically, the Judkins left and the Judkins right 
shown in the bottom left are your go-to catheters for engaging the left and the right systems. Sometimes you can use the 3D RC or the no torque catheter as it's also named shown on the very right to engage the RCA. For radial procedures, the Tiger and Jackie shown in the top left are the typical catheters available for use. Coronary angiography takes practice, but it is a highly enjoyable and rewarding experience. More instructional videos will follow.